with Adam Sherwinski, and today I have a question for you, Adam. Yes. What is the difference between fog and smog? So you were in California. Smog was kind of common there, Daily. right? Daily, yes. right? And so we're going to talk about the difference between the two because there okay. are some similarities as in what they look like and some of the processes that kind of go together with both of them. But right. let's talk about our different types of fog first, right? Oh. Radiation fog, very common here in central Illinois. Uh, there you go. There's the Is title. it caused by actual radiation? It is not caused by radiation. Oh. Uh, not nuclear radiation or anything like that, okay. but solar radiation. So okay. What happens is during the day, we collect a lot of radiation from the sun, right? That's mm -hmm. how our planet gets warm. Right. So the ingredients you need basically are going to be clear skies. We lose that radiation. It starts to... Uh, starts to lift out of the uh, basically of the solid surfaces out there in the, the ground and then move up but a calm wind and sometimes even having a layer of um, basically a stable layer aloft really helps with them so you have moisture too in the atmosphere that does cause your radiation fog mm. so you'll probably see that usually in the summertime when it starts to get a little crisp out and then right. or even in the fall and you'll see it kind of like just start to bubble up after sunset here you know you're losing that radiation from the sunshine and then all of a sudden those little valleys that you see you see a little bit more of that so you get that a lot in the valley too as well yes uh, in california so the radiation fog is pretty common across much of the world and now, it's kind of lower to the ground yes. than the traditional like marine layer fog or something right. like that okay and then there's advection fog we had this the other day there and what it is is basically you have pretty much warm air going over a very cold surface when we have a lot of snowfall and then we have a lot of warm air coming in from the south that can really really enhance that and cause some uh, really much uh, the, the, fro the fog to form there. It's really cool huh. to see. Uh, I've seen it a couple of times. I remember we had a lot of snowpack there back in college, and then we had just a wind from the south really kicking up, and all of a sudden it brought in some of that fog. So there you go. That's what uh, kind of looks like here. Warm air moves over the cold surface like snow. Okay. It works really well there. We had some colder temperatures. Warm air moved over it, and that kind of happens as well. So sometimes it's just moisture locked in place can cause that too as well. And there's a bunch of different types of fog too, but we won't get all to it today. Now we're going to talk about smog. It's slightly, oh, we got Wait, a question. Yeah, I have a question. When you said moisture, moisture locked, what does that mean? So basically it just has nowhere to go. The winds aren't pushing it away. Oh, okay. It's kind of stuck in one spot here. And you can also get that during a very stable layer. So smog gotcha. formation smog. here, how it forms. Normal conditions, air is warmest at the surface, colder as it goes up, right? So any pollution that you have starts to move up and out. Well, when you have an inversion where you have warm air aloft and then oh. at the surface it's cooler, that really doesn't have anywhere to go, right? So you start to have that pollution kind of hang out a little bit longer. That's how you get your smog. Slightly that is different. such a cool graphic. Like, it's a very similar process with fog, too. When yeah. you have those inversions, you can get fog well. When we look at meteorologists, if we see an inverted layer or inversion happening, we go, okay, we also have a lot of moisture in place and we don't have strong winds. Perfect setup to get fog something that we look at more forecasting. So there's a difference. That's cool. It looks very similar on paper, right? When you're looking at fog and smog, look very similar, but with smog, it's pollution based, not right. so much with fog, but both use an inverted, not all the time, but they have a stable layer and inversion layer that they use to kind of bounce off of. So, off of. so really that's the key component there with that inversion. You know, it just gets locked right there. It just kind of hangs out around the city. Right. That smoky kind of gross look here. I don't know how often it gets there uh, when you were back in California it was, but uh, it seems like it does as a common occurrence. It was a common occurrence because probably there was probably radiation fog from actual radiation mm -hmm. and like the actual smog that was in the air. Mm -hmm. um, and then the marine layer, which we talked a little bit about about how you know in the mornings the I guess it's from what what causes the marine layer again you told me I remember I'm pretty sure what causes the marine layer is it's the the, uh, the uh, water coming in so it's from right. the water it's the air moving over the water over and the water causing the moisture yeah to move inland so then depending on where you are and then now I know what that valley fog we just called it like the valley haze yeah but now I know yeah. now I know what it is yeah. that's awesome it's really cool and there's so many different types of uh, fog that you can get here. Some of it you can find in Central Illinois, like advection fog, mm -hmm. which again, common, very common in the winter time here, and also radiation fog, very common in the fall and in the spring and in the summer. I tell people all the time, whenever you get those clear skies, you get those dew points <laughs> right. that are a little bit higher here, uh, or even lower sometimes, you just lose that radiation, you get a little bit of foggy conditions out there. So moisture is a key component, clear skies, and uh, basically having a just mo yeah, moisture clear skies and uh, light winds are really for that radiation fog. Right. But for advection fog, you need that warm surface or warm air moving over a cold surface. Right. Yeah. And I like it. that then you can sort of use those conditions since you know that that's how mm -hmm. fog is formed to actually make accurate yeah. predictions yes. on the weather. That's awesome. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've gone, ah, it's going to be clear tonight. Right. I bet you there's going to be fog tomorrow morning. It 
Sure right. enough, I wake up, there's fog the next morning. Because you know, and when you know how mm -hmm. it works and the science of it, then you can accurately predict. Mm -hmm. So there's your two difference between the two, smog and fog. Well, thank you very much for being here. I always learn so much during these segments. I hope that you do too. And if you have a question for Adam, you can email him at asherwinski at wcia.com.